Welcome everybody to Scott Cooks. I've often been asked, can you make a cake in a foodie? Well, I think we can, and we're going to be using our new Ninja Foodie one lid on steam and bake to make this delicious, super moist red velvet cake mix. And we're going to top it off with this. Now, this did not come with my foodie. This is a Chicago Metallic. Anyway, somebody brought, bought me a set of these um, of three different sizes for a Christmas present a while back. Well, this size just happens to fit in the Ninja Foodie, so we'll be using it. Now, you can go to the Ninja website and purchase some cake pans, uh, but I just happen to have this one, so that's what I'm going to use. We're going to be using most of the recipe here. As it says on the box, we're going to make a couple of minor changes and we will out, uh, definitely be doing a different baking method than this. We won't be doing that at all. So let's go ahead and get this party started. Uh, it's breakfast time around here for me and I was trying to figure out what's for breakfast. The breakfast of champions. We're going to have red velvet cake for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I know. Go ahead and yell at me. But that's what we're doing. We are using the rack today. So disassemble your rack, use the part that has these handles on it, and just place your pan right inside like so. That's how we're going to do our steam and bake, just like that. All right, let's go ahead and get this mix ready. All right, let's go ahead and get this batter mixed up. Now, I'm pretty sure this is going to make too much batter, um, so I'm probably going to end up with two cakes out of this. I could be wrong, but I think this is too much batter for a small pan. We'll soon find out. That was one and a quarter cups of water. But don't worry about what I'm doing here, guys. You just follow your instructions on the box, with one exception because of the way we're cooking this. Uh, it does call for three eggs. I'm going to use two eggs. You may not be able to tell it here, but these eggs are massive. Uh, I will only be using two eggs in this recipe because my eggs are twice the size of a normal Walmart quote-unquote large egg. Have you seen the size of those large, quote unquote, large eggs lately? Holy crap, what a joke. Right, guys? You go open the box when you get home and they're like, like little, from little miniature chickens or something. Anyway, these are not. I bought these special, uh, very large eggs because that's what, you know, when we're cooking an egg for breakfast or something, that's what we want. We want an egg, man. Anyway, next up will be some oil. Go ahead and add your oil. Just use whatever the box tells you to use. I'm gonna go ahead and mix the oil and eggs together first, and then I will put the uh, cake mix in. I just like, kind of like to start off like this. And if you wanna take the trouble to get your blender out or your mixer, um, you can do it. I didn't bother, because I don't really care if I mix it by hand or not. scissors here. Now the same as using a, a mixer. We want to go light on this. Why did I say we want to go light on this? The same as using a, a hand mixer. We want to add this in slowly to incorporate it so we don't get any uh, big chunks like I'm getting right now. And we just keep going a little at a time. Look at that red velvet color guys. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's just food coloring, but hey, it's going to make a great breakfast cake. Put it in the comments if you guys eat cake for breakfast. Uh, I don't usually, but uh, hey, we've got eggs, we've got flour, we've got sugar. You know, we basically got a pancake going on here, so uh, why not? Why not? Yummy. Go ahead and spray your pan down, guys. I'm just using some Pam here. Try to hit the sides if you can. 
Now we do have to account for a little bit of rising, so we want to be careful not to fill to the top. So I'm going to pull these handles away while I pour it. And, uh, and this will determine uh, right here if we're going to make one cake or two. I've got a feeling we're going to make two, but let's see what happens. I could be way wrong. You know what, guys? I think I might be wrong. I don't think I'm going to have enough for two. I think I might have a little too much for one. But not quite enough for two. So this is going to be great. Look at this cake. Ah, no, that's good. That's leaving me about a half inch on the top. So there you go. I thought I might get two, but um, it was incorrect. And that's that. That is that. Is that beautiful or what? I'm starving. I can't wait to cook this. All right, guys, we're going to go in here to the uh, foodie now and put it on steam and bake. Uh, we're going to put a little uh, three cups of water in the pot, and then we're going to put it on steam and bake and set the temperature to 285 in the time for about 25 minutes, but we're going to keep an eye on it. So let's go ahead and get some water in the pot. All right, guys, this is two cups. Now, you want to put three full cups of water in. Just room temperature water. We are going to be uh, steaming for 25 minutes, so you don't want this thing to run out of water. Okay, guys, we are using the one lid, so we have to slide our lever over to the center. It's going to give me steam and crisp, and we're going to turn the knob to steam and bake. I want to lower the temperature to 285. And we're going to increase the time to 25 minutes, although we will be doing some checks, although we will be doing some checks along the way to make sure everything is going well. This is preheat. Basically, it's um, what it's doing right now is it's going to boil the water to create some steam. Once that once it detects the steam, uh, it will go ahead and start kicking the air fryer on and off, on and off, on and off. So if you start to hear your foodie doing weird things, uh, it's perfectly normal. Uh, I know you've watched a million of these videos of mine, but in case you're a first timer, I want to make sure you understand when we're using the steam and crisp steam and bake function, this has no function whatsoever. This is for pressure cooking. All of the steam will be coming from the rear when we do a steam and bake and steam and crisp. And there will be a considerable amount of steam that will come on and off, on and off. So make sure that you're very clear over the top so that that steam doesn't um, damage anything of your cabinetry or whatever. Uh, with the three cups of water on a preheat, I'm gonna estimate eight to 10 minutes to create the steam. And then once that happens, uh, everything else will start up for us. Anyway, that's it. We'll see you back here when we do our first check. Hey everybody, it's uh, down to about 13 and a half minutes halfway or so and we're going to give us a very I hate to open this lid but we got to take a little peek really fast whoa she rose but it's looking good i don't want to leave this open too long but look at that is that a red velvet cake or what awesome let's get this lid closed real quick and let it finish up uh so i'm not sure if we're going to go the rest of the fit 13 minutes or not uh we're going to keep a pretty close eye on it now uh and we're also going to do the old knife test. We take a, a butter knife, slip it right down in and see if it comes out clean. We'll do that in about five minutes, I think. All right, guys, we've got about uh, 10 minutes left on the timer. We're going to do a quick butter knife test. And uh, I'm sure if you've ever baked anything, you know what I'm doing here. In and out. I'm going to tell you what, that is pretty darn clean and very, very dry. Honestly, I think this cake is finished. I'm going to give it one more minute. So we're going to bring it down to, um, uh, let's bring it down to an even eight minutes remaining. And we'll do a couple more of the butter knife tests in various locations to make sure. But if it's, if it's dry in the center, uh, typically it will be dry pretty much everywhere. All right, we've got eight minutes on the timer. Take our final check. First, we'll go right over in this area. Oh, I can just feel that, that that's ready. I mean, there we are dry, one on the other side. That cake is ready, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. And there you go, guys, straight out of the Ninja Foodie, a Betty Crocker Super Moist Red Velvet Cake. 
made in the Ninja Foodi, steam and bake. We're gonna let that um, cool down just a bit and then we're gonna load it up with this Duncan Hines whipped cream frosting. So all I'm gonna do is just kind of flip it and then roll it back over again. There we go. It was hot on my hand. It's a little too warm to frost, but we'll get to that in just one second. Let's go ahead and frost this cake, guys. Now, I am not an expert cake froster or baker, but I'm gonna do my best. One freshly baked, frosted red velvet, velvet cake right out of the Ninja Foodi, still nice and warm. And I guess that answers the question, can you bake a cake in the Ninja Foodi? I'm gonna say, heck yeah, with ease. And now the best part of any cake is the eating part. One. And now the best part of baking a cake is eating it and let's give this a try it's still warm by the way so you think this is going to be as good as cooking in the oven look at that look how moist that is i think this is going to be better than cooking in the oven well all right guys let's have some of this red velvet cake best breakfast in town right super moist Super delicious. Mm. Oh yeah. Still a little warm. Can you see the moisture in there? This is just amazing. Mm. I think I'm gonna cook all my cakes in the foodie now. That's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that bell for notifications. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Very important. And we'll see you real soon on the next Ninja Foodie video.